Okay, so I'm gonna start taking the carburetor apart and um, I'm just gonna speed up through portions of the process. According to the guy who sold me the carb, this has never been uh, taken apart, at least not by him. I don't know how long he owned it for, but anyway. We have the filter, the inlet, and of course we have the, we have the spring. This one is not working. Okay, so actually it is the choke diaphragm is working, which is good news. It's just this thing, uh, this vacuum hose that is shot. It is holding, and then it releases. It's going to require a major cleaning, but uh, okay, so that is out. this yeah, now it's snug this bolt here is pretty much loose and that's the thing with these carbs whenever whenever you get one you basically do not know what you're really getting until you go in here and uh, start taking it apart and um, discovering what's wrong with it. And um, okay, so this is the uh, choke mechanism. Yeah, there's a couple of seals. All of these, yeah, this is pretty pretty hard. Uh, Whenever you get a kit, the AC Delco kit has new ones. So that's, we're going to keep it there for now. And, uh, this is the uh, second secondary lockout lever. You always want to make sure that, uh, that you have it. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to have problems. Okay, next is going to be the, um, the, um, the accelerator pump. I'm going to remove the, the lever. And uh, 
And of course we have to push the uh, roll pin back in, you know, so this one can come off. I have a, a little punch, it's a 30, 30 seconds um, punch and uh, that allows me to, uh, and one thing I want to mention, uh, let me see if I can zoom in here so you can see it. Whenever you are looking into uh, buying a used carburetor, make sure that this tab here is not broken. If it is, the carburetor, carburetor is junk. And also, you don't want to push the pin all the way so it touches the um, this area here. Uh, you want to leave a little room so you can actually, at some point, when you're reassembling the carburetor, so you can push that pin back into the um, into the lever. Anyway. That's it. As you can see, the lever is out. And now, you want to rotate this a little bit so the um, this little shaft can come out. It has a little tab on it that, that keeps it, you know, from falling out. So. That is that. If you haven't uh, taken apart a lot of these, um, it's a good idea, I believe, to um, reinstall some of the hardware. So, so it stays with, uh, with its uh, respective part. Makes it a lot easier um, instead of you chasing things and because there's a lot of parts to these carburetors so you can always remove them and um, and clean them but um, it just helps keep these things um, where they belong This is all disconnected, so this just kind of comes out with a little lever, both levers. And um, it's always a good idea to either shoot some video or take a lot of photos of how things, you know, go together. You cannot have too many photos, trust me. This one, of course, being a 76 carburetor has accessible the idle um, screws. So the newer ones are plugged or in some cases they've been busted open for people to uh, clean them and, and rebuild the carbs uh, unless they're super dirty I would leave those alone, but uh, these are going to come out and I'm probably going to install new ones. This is one of the idle mixer screws and you don't need a special tool for, for, thi for this one at least because it's the uh, 1705 carburetor and I'm not going to, at this point, I don't care about how it's set. I'm gonna, once I rebuild the carb, I'm gonna, like I said, get new screws, idle mixer screws, and, uh, and set them at that point. So, it's not a, a concern at this point. These are not expensive, Just you just have to make sure that you order the right ones. 
and here's the other one. These carbs, over the years, they get so filthy inside, and that's why they need a, a good bath. Okay, I'm gonna remove this vacuum fitting here. Fine, just dirty. Uh, next, I'm going to start loosening the um, screws that there's nine of them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then in here there's two more. So there's nine screws that hold the, um, the air horn. Now, whenever you remove the air horn, do what you can to keep the gasket attached to the body. And I got ahead of myself here. I should have removed the uh, secondary metering rods, but that is not a problem. There's just this little screw that secures the, the hanger. And there they are. Next we have the, the accelerator. Accelerator pump, it's fairly easy. All you have to do is just get the gasket a little bit out of the way. And there it is. Yeah, someone has already, of course, it's an old carburetor. You see the blue diaphragm here. That is um, the newer style, which does not harden with the ethanol fuel, so that's good. And then here you also have a spring. There it is. And you just wanna keep these pieces somewhat together. Just so you remember where everything what goes with what. This is installed properly, which is good to see. I've seen them torn and um, actually this gasket is in pretty good shape, which is very nice. So to remove it and reuse it if, if you can, What you wanna do is, and I don't know how much of that you can see here. I just start kind of bending it and then working it around the uh, 
primary mirroring rods, um, the hanger rather, and just kind of slide it out. Yeah, this is good gasket. And these actually, the um, power piston, it's actually like a press fit. You just gently pull it up and you can see this little, I think it's plastic or nylon, this washer looking thing. And it comes out of their releases and uh, you can just take it out. And just as a, it's an observation more than anything, um, even though it looks like there may be some missing O-rings, there's nothing like that. This is the way this, this is. And uh, also there's tiny little wires here that help keep the metering rods in place. So do not take that, do not mess with that little wire, so pin in the neck. All right, so that is out. And you have this retainer, which is just a plastic retainer. It just kind of drops in there. So that's that. Then there's this cup which also just pulls out. And we're gonna remove next the, um, the float along with the, with the needle. All you have to do in this case, this is really pushed down, that's interesting. But anyway, you wanna lift this out of there and you have the needle with the hanger and your float with a little clip that um, holds it in place. So, let's take a look at the, at the needle. It looks pretty good actually, wow. This is all very good. The float. We're gonna test it. I'm gonna test it later. It looks it looks really really good. Okay, and I'm gonna keep all of this together for um, I'm gonna inspect everything later. That's very good. Now a big screwdriver, flathead screwdriver, and. The reason being you want to remove the, the needle seat and um, keep getting ahead of myself. Also, when you remove the power piston, there's a spring in the cavity here. And you want to remove that, of course. It's out. Now, I don't have a special screwdriver. Eventually, I would like to probably make one. I use the biggest one I have. And it's still a little tricky. You wanna make sure that you center it properly in there so you can remove the, uh, the needle seat. So, just take your time. And there it goes. Once it breaks, it's, it's pretty easy to um, to remove. And here's the uh, the needle seat. And one <clears throat> excuse me, one observation. This again, and and. You know, I'm not 100% sure. This is for an automatic. I'm, I'm making the comparison with mine, which is a four-speed, my carburetor. And mine had the, um, it was what is referred to as windowed. There was, I believe, two openings 
and um, people talk about those are intended to reduce turbulence or something like that. I don't know. I don't know if this was replaced and um, at some point, and it's not the original, it's supposed to be a windowed one, but I think the differences, if any, are gonna be minimal. So some people may disagree, but um, anyway, I just wanted to point that out. And also along with the uh, seat, there's gonna be a small washer, gasket, whatever you call it. If I can fish it out of here, that'd be great. There it is. And when you get the um, rebuilt kit, actually the AC Delco um, kit comes with a, a seat and the, um, the little gasket. So I'll set that aside. Let's see if I can move this tripod and we can have a look in there. It's a little dirty, but um, otherwise it's in pretty good shape. And in here, of course, we still have the, um, the jets. It gives, gives me a lot more leverage and there it goes that one is loose yeah, there's a lot of, some build up in here but um again it's an old carburetor there we go wow And with the needle nose pliers, we're gonna fish them out of here. There's one. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to see a number. 76. Interesting. On my, uh, on my carb, the only thing that I could read was, or make out was a six. So I'm guessing that's the size these came out of the factory um, with yep 76 and these are just a little dirty yeah these will clean up nicely screw for the bearing ball that's it's a stop valve stop ball whatever stop valve I I call it it's this funky looking screw and the um, all you have to do is just turn it upside down as such Here's the little ball. Again, the kit will have a new one, a replacement. So that's all good. This little stop for the uh, power piston, I've heard that you don't want to mess with it unless you know what you're doing. I don't. So I like to leave it alone. I don't think there's any need for me to mess with that. This little baffle here. And that is pretty much all you gotta remove from the, um, from the body at this point anyway. Next, I'm gonna take it off of the um, of the stand, and I'm gonna re remove the uh, the base. Alrighty, next, 
Some of these carbs have three screws. This one has two, just like my 76. And actually these are the only two, I believe, that are Phillips heads. Everything else you can remove with flathead screwdrivers. Separate these pieces is a putty knife. And you just want to gently start trying to get this thing to separate. So shouldn't take a, a lot of effort unless someone really tightened the, the screws like way too much. <clears throat> there you have the base plate. And here we can see that the The wells are plugged the way that were done at the factory. And um, I'm gonna, after everything is, is clean and uh, and ready to, uh, to start the reassembly uh, process, I'm gonna use the um, JB Weld epoxy marine or fuel epoxy and uh, I'm going to reseal those. There we go. Yeah, there's a little bit of tear here and there, but uh, again, with the uh, with a rebuild kit, you're gonna get a new one, so no worries. I don't think these really go bad, but and they could be probably reused in a pinch, but if you get a new one, might as well use the new ones. <clears throat> and then with a, with a blade, again, you can just remove all the little remnants. And after you give it a good bath, all of this stuff, it's gonna be gone anyways.